If you are watching this, I am guessing it's because we have something in common. We both grind our teeth. So my name is Dr. Kate. Welcome back. I am starting a new YouTube tradition called the Friday Sessions. Friday is the day I've designated as the one I'm going to kind of tune in and see if there are any uh, distortions in my ability to manifest, heal, grow, all that kind of thing. And I'd love to bring you with me. And if there's something you could benefit from along the way, that is wonderful. And if you see my process and you feel like it would be a good fit for you, then I would love to guide you along your path from where you are to where you want to be. So a little bit about my story with uh, teeth grinding. Several years ago, I went to a dentist in the Knoxville area and he looked in my mouth and he said, oh my God, if you don't stop grinding your teeth, your teeth are going to be nubs. You're wearing them down to nothing. And I was like, whoa, slow your roll there, buddy. I feel like there's a kinder and gentler way you could have shared that information with me. But anyway, he was right. I'm wearing my teeth down for sure. Your teeth are made of bone, of course, and bones are the hardest uh, materials we have in our bodies. And when we grind them together, they start to wear each other down. So the dentist, of course, recommended a night guard uh, so that if you're going to chew on something, you're chewing on something that's not as hard as your teeth and isn't wearing them down which uh, is great for not having nubs down the road, but it doesn't really do anything for the reasons why we grind our teeth. And even though I had access to all the information I'm about to share with you all those years ago, I have a lot of other things going on in my life and getting to the root issue of why I grind my teeth didn't quite make it to the top for whatever reason. So I am uh, going to look at that now because I had a night guard. I went ahead and ordered that, went through the whole process, spent hundreds of dollars. And then six months ago, my sweet, adorable, cute little dog uh, got a hold of it, used it like a chew toy and, uh, you know, chewed it up into a mangled little bit. So I said, now is a great opportunity to figure out why you grind your teeth and bring that process to resolution so that you don't have to get a new night guard and you can relax your jaw. Wouldn't that be great? So full disclosure, I did my first session on this a couple of weeks ago and um, the first distortion that came up, and this is going to make more sense as we go on, was in the area of energetic entanglement. So I did a clearing session on that and honestly, I was amazed at the difference that it made. You know, I'm not hundred percent done with teeth grinding if i was i wouldn't be making this video right but the improvement was immediate noticeable right away i started to feel like oh that's what it's like to have your jaw relaxed that's what it's like to not be feeling like you want to chew on something all the time because i i mean no one ever told me my husband never told me we we slept in the same bed for years and he never said, oh my gosh, you grind your teeth. I can hear it all night long. But I had definite awareness of it during my waking time, right? It's like, why am I, oh, I just want to clench and bite down. So feeling that relaxation was amazing. It was like, oh, this is uncharted territory. But over the last uh, 10 days, we had a lot of travel going on. Our amazing daughter was here to visit and there were just some things out of my normal routine that were a little stressful. And that's when I was like, okay, there's definitely still something there. Progress has been made, but it's not complete. So I'm going to share my process with you today, full disclosure, as I was kind of repackaging this information in a way that I could easily share with you guys at a pretty immediate awareness of where the distortion is and uh, so I was my intention was to go through it real time with you but I got a little bit of a heads up and in that I'll share that I feel like the thing that did come up for me is very relevant across anyone who is probably dealing with some kind of or who is dealing with some kind of teeth grinding issue so Stay tuned because if you go through this process with me, I know you're going to get benefit out of it. You're going to relax your jaw. You're going to have beautiful, healthy teeth for years and years and years to come. And you're going to be integrating life more easily. So um, I will say, so the first thing I do when I work with others is introduce them to their authority, right? To 
to the way that you're going to most clearly and easily receive information from your body in terms of what is correct for you, what is not correct for you, how to navigate life and all that good stuff. It's a super, super empowering process. So my authority is I'm, a, I'm an emotional generator, right? So I get what is called a sacral response in regards to yes and no questions. It rises up at a visceral level. Sometimes it comes out as yes, no. Sometimes it's mm hmm Especially if you like catch me off guard, do you wanna mm hmm <laughs> And the question just comes running in. Uh, other times it's yes, no, and that kind of thing. And that's how I navigate the protocol that I've created. Now I am emotional, which means that I do have to be cognizant or aware of where I am in my emotional wave. So. I'm not gonna sit down and do work like this on myself when I'm at emo an emotional high where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm super excited. I'm gonna do this session on my gr I'm grinding my teeth and it's gonna be amazing. And that's not gonna be the best time for me to do this work. And I'm not gonna do it when I'm at an emotional low where I'm like, uh, I could do it, probably won't work. <laughs> so it's good to be for emotional people. You want to be at a place of neutrality when you um, do this kind of work. The other thing I want to share is that I move through resistance very quickly when I'm able to see this is something that's going on. This is stopping my goal from manifesting. So I am super motivated to move through it. It doesn't matter how deeply entwined it is. It doesn't matter how much change it's going to bring in my life relationships or experience it's like okay i see this thing this is going to be hard this is going to be dis disruptive or what it is but it is going to also bring me to where i want to go which is a place where i am not grinding my teeth so be willing to move through your resistance Otherwise, your mind's going to convince you, oh, you probably don't want to go there. You should, you should do this instead. You should, you know, go see this doctor or try this technique because your mind isn't on board. So the more willing you are to surrender your thoughts, your mind, and come into the knowingness of your body, the more uh, success you're going to experience with this kind of work. The other thing I want to share is that when you're navigating your inner authority and you're trying to or you are tuning in and asking questions sometimes you got to get up and move around sometimes you got to move the energy uh, when i was in the midst of doing this i needed to go uh, outside we have aerial hammocks and i just hung upside down to shift my perspective it might be get a drink of water wash your hands go to the bathroom do a little kind of full body movement to again bring that resistance down and bring you into a place of flow so after you have an awareness of what your internal authority is, then we're always going to open sacred space. And that is a process that's really designed to bring your awareness out of your thoughts and into the knowingness of your body. So we can do this together right now. I would love for you to join me. It is, um, you know, when I first started doing this, it was like healing is this this sacred um, thing that you have to take seriously and you, you know, it's solemn and there's a certain tone you set. And now I've been able to embody the knowingness that it is the energy behind the things you say and do that bring things in, that brings things into being. So I like to take, I am enjoying taking a lighthearted approach to coming into sacred space. And I invite you to do that with me now. So the first step is to enjoy a nice deep inhale breath and exhale out any thoughts, worries, or concerns for the day. Coming into this moment as it is, open to receive and willing to release. We come more fully into sacred space. We invite in beings and energies of high light and vibration to impart their wisdom, share their love, and light our path. We establish a pure connection between ourselves and source, free of ego, bias, competition, or any need for control. And we fully and willingly release anything we may be holding that could interfere with the accurate interpretation of the wisdom coming forth, 
such as earmuffs that make us say, I don't know, or uh, blindfolds where we say we can't see. We take all of that off so that we can accurate, accurately interpret the wisdom that comes forth. We come into our sacred hearts, that aspect of ourself where soul self meets physical self, where we know, understand, and have full faith that all we seek lies within. Then we surround our hearts with a green Merkaba. That's a three-dimensional Star of David. I'll pop a picture up on the screen so you can see what that is. It's two intersecting pyramids, an upward-facing pyramid and a downward-facing pyramid. We allow the upward facing pyramid to rotate slowly counterclockwise, while the downward facing pyramid rotates slowly clockwise. Why do we do this? What is this for? And does it matter if you can see it? No, energy follows intention. So if you are intending that this be happening, then that is happening. It is there because the next thing we're gonna do is welcome in the energy pouring down into us from source and being channeled up into us from the center of the earth. It's coming together in that sacred heart and that Merkaba is helping to spiral it out in all directions to fill our entire physical beings, our auric fields, and to surround and perfuse our intention, which is to relax our jaw, stop grinding our teeth, so we have beautiful, healthy teeth for the rest of our lives. And having an awareness, tuning into that pure energy coming down from source and up from the earth, that gives you a sense or a feeling of how much power is available for you to create your life according with your intentions and desires, to manifest what you want in place and to deconstruct the things that you no longer want to experience. Now that we've radiated that energy out in all directions, we are going to open to receive divine guidance. We invited them in in the beginning. Did you remember? It's kind of like we're having a party. Everybody come in who's of high light and vibration, celebrate this party with us. And now that they're all here, we're kind of shaking hands with them, saying thank you. Thank you for coming forward. The next thing we're going to do is awaken more fully to our authentic selves connecting with them through our hearts, through our third eyes, to their presence within our DNA so that we may merge deeper and deeper into oneness with them, initiating millions of new connections within our nervous systems now. Hmm. Enjoy a nice deep breath here. And then see you if you have an awareness of any specific assistance that's stepping forward with you to really connect on a deeper level with you. For me, those that are present today are uh, Kuan Yin and Mother Mary, really representing the divine feminine. It feels very fluid. It feels very uplifting and empowering. So see if you have an awareness of who might be stepping forward for you. And now I'm about to pop up a slideshow on the screen. I was hoping my little video would stay in place over that, but it didn't. That's okay. You'll be able to see the process as I go through kind of asking myself yes or no questions so that I can discern where the area of distortion is and how to correct it and bring it back into alignment because I want that stream of energy that carries me forward into the manifestation of my life to be full powered, right? I don't want any leaks. I don't want any tributaries coming off of it. I want it to be full, complete, and super powered. And maybe you do too. Okay, so how this program works is to identify and remove any areas of distortion in your manifesting grid or your grid for manifestation. That is all the energy available to you to create your life in accordance with your truth with your authentic self. So these are the areas of distortion where it's a possibility. So what I do in this circumstance and what I would lead you through is using your authority to answer the question of where is the area of your distortion. So as I look at this, I'm saying, is the area of my distortion when it comes to stopping the grinding of my teeth in the area of energetic entanglement? 
that's what it was last week and I did the clearing session and that's what has gotten me the the progress that I've already experienced so that's no is it in my physical body mm -mm. it just rises up from my sacral is it an unenforced or weak boundary mm -mm. Mm -mm. and you may want to revisit that later that's the sense that I just got is there an environmental block mm -mm. is there stagnancy mm -mm. Is there um, a distortion in the areas of connections and disconnections? Mm -mm. Is it knowing but not embodied? My whole body is like, mm -hmm, yes, <laughs> that is where the distortion is. That is what is skewing my ability to manifest and relax my jaw. So we're going to move right to that area of knowing but disembodied and it was in um, cultivating these possibilities that it was like oh i see what it is right there so you can see in the first column we have the i am's i am enough is that where i am knowing but disembodied and let me explain what that is like knowing is logically yes you know that to be true disembodied is while you know it to be true you're not embodying it you're not living your life from that place right there's a disconnect there so i i know the answers is it in the area like do i know that i have all the answers i seek within me but that's not how i'm living my life no is it in the area of i am loved mm -mm. is it i am connected mm -mm. i am allowed mm -mm. i assimilate and integrate <laughs> And to get this to even come up, like I had to go outside and hang up down, hang upside down in my aerial hammock uh, because it was just like stuck. I just had this feeling of this is whatever's coming up next is the thing I'm just chewing on over and over and over again. And I had to shift my perspective to open up the space for that information to come forward. So that is where my distortion is. I logically know that as life comes to me, I break it down, I assimilate, and I integrate it, and then I move on. But that is not how I'm living. Whatever is happening in my life right now, I'm just chewing on it over and over and over again. I just keep wanting to chew on it, and that's such a visceral response that my body is showing me right now. Yeah, it's showing up in like eating when I'm not hungry, and uh, just that initial reflex or response, just, I just want to clench up and chew on this for a minute. And then you can see the other possibilities and options, and I get a no on all of those. So the only place I got to, is the area of distortion here? Yes, is in I assimilate and integrate. So that's all well and great, right? What do I do now? Well, now... I come into this place of anything that happens, anything that I experience of life that's coming at with life coming at me. I breathe and I pause and I give myself a moment to break it down, assimilate it, to integrate it, to allow it to complete so that my subconscious mind isn't convincing me that I need to chew on it and keep chewing on it. So this is a practice, right? This is where the action piece comes in. No amount of, you know, energy work or other people giving me information or supplements or changing my diet or getting more exercise. No amount of that is going to bring about a shift as changing my habit will, right? To create the space, to give myself time to process and integrate whatever is happening, you know, living in a foreign country, listening to and learning a new language, growing a business, working with other people, navigating relationship challenges, all these things I have just been chewing on. And so acknowledging that and pausing the next time something happens that I need to integrate is what's going to bring this to resolution. And if I can't do that, or next Friday I come back to this and I evaluate and say what changes and observations have I noticed, that will, that will be my clue, right? Is my jaw hurting less? Are my gums remaining, you know, uns unswollen when I wake up? Do I feel any need to eat when I'm not hungry to get that um, need to chew out? 
the proof will be in my experience over the next week. And that will also give me a gauge as to if this is something I need to maybe do some more energy clearing on to bring to resolution, or is it finished and it's time to move forward into something else. So reflect on that for a moment. Are you chewing over and over on the experiences that are coming at you in this life? Or are you assimilating and integrating? Because I'm going to guess if you're assimilating and integrating, you're not experiencing this. You don't have TMJ issues and jaw pain. But feel free to prove me wrong. Um, I love to. I would love to hear your reflections and awarenesses, any kind of feedback you have in the comments. That brings, so this is what that kind of session would look like when we're identifying distortions. And I'm also finding it, you know, there might be more than one area of distortion and we just kind of put that in the back of our knowingness and we focus on what is mine to look at today, right? What do I have the energy for? Where am I responding, right? Because a lot of times when we follow that, the other distortions, the other disruptions that are occurring they just kind of tend to take care of themselves. So you don't have to uncover every rock or stone and look under it. You just, what do I have the energy for today? And that's what brings the session to completion. So just as we open sacred space, we now have a process to go through and close sacred space because it's nice to try to live there, but it's not really congruent with third dimensional physical reality and sometimes we try to live outside of our body and then our body breaks down and we don't know why it's because we're not occupying it so now I'm going to turn my awareness inward toward any void or space left behind from all the hmm, it's like grime I released today and I'm going to fill that void with unconditional love and gratitude Raising the vibration of those spaces within me so high that nothing less than love could ever thrive there again. Because voids are like vacuums, right? And a vacuum can't stay empty. It will suck something into it. So be conscious of what you are calling into those spaces. Otherwise, I'm just going to call that need to grind right back into those spaces. And I'm finished with that. I don't want to do that anymore. And now I allow for full and complete integration of this new level of healing into my being on a cellular level. I just want to move a little bit with ease and grace in the now moment and in alignment with my authentic self. No, the irony is not lost on me that I close every session like that. And yet it's something I know, but I'm not embodying in my daily life. You got to love all these opportunities to learn and grow. Or if you choose to love these opportunities to learn and grow, it gets more fun and it gets easier. Lastly, I am going to close this sacred space with love and gratitude in my heart, in my heart, my hearts, maybe I have more than one, for all of my opportunities to learn and grow and create in accordance with my authentic self. So that is the Friday session start to finish. We had an intention of stopping teeth grinding we went through a process of how to manifest that. So it's not esoteric. It's not having other people work on you. It's tapping into your inner knowingness and using that to chart your course forward in a very empowered way. So did this experience resonate with you? Did your body kind of have this, oh, oh yeah, that's what's going on here. If it did and you enjoy my vibe and you think we would be a good fit, then I would love the opportunity to guide you along the path from where you are to where you want to be. Have a good one, y'all.